When an acid and a base react together, they go through what's called a neutralization reaction. It's called a neutralization reaction because the products are neutral. They're not especially acidic or basic. The products that result from any acid-base reaction are going to be water and some sort of salt. When I say salt, I'm referring to any type of ionic compound. Salt doesn't have to be just common table salt, sodium chloride, but any type of ionic compound that contains a metal with a nonmetal or contains polyatomic ions. In a typical acid-base neutralization reaction, the acid has an H in it and the base has an OH. The H from the acid and the OH from the base come together and that's what's making water as one of the products. The other ions that are not the H and the OH are coming together to make the salt. Those other ions would be the anion from the acid and the cation from the base. Essentially, this is just another double replacement reaction where they're trading partners. It's just that one of the couples at the end always ends up being water. The other couple at the end always ends up being some sort of ionic compound. Let's look at an example. When HCl reacts with magnesium hydroxide, we get water and magnesium chloride as a result. The H and the OH are coming together to make water. The magnesium and the chlorine are coming together to make the salt. Notice that we're not really paying attention to how many hydroxides are in the base when we're thinking about the formula for water. And we're not really paying attention to how many chlorines there are in the HCl when we're thinking about the formula of the salt. What's important is that our compounds at the end are electronically neutral. They have zero overall charge. Again, for our salt, we're going to use the crisscross rule to predict its formula. We've got the magnesium ion coming from the base, that's Mg2+, and we've got the chloride ion coming from the acid, that's Cl-. When we crisscross, the two from the magnesium goes down next to the chlorine, and the one from the chlorine goes down next to the magnesium. So we get MgCl2. Water is always going to be H2O. I've seen students make the ions try to switch partners, but they write the water as something weird like OH2 or HOH. Please just remember that one of the products is always water and write it as H2O. Here's an example of a neutralization reaction. We're trying to find the balanced chemical equation when barium hydroxide is neutralized with nitric acid. Again, this is given to us in word form. First, we have to use our nomenclature rules to write our reactants as formulas. Barium is Ba2 plus and hydroxide is OH minus one. We need to crisscross to make it an electronically neutral formula. When we crisscross, we get Ba parentheses OH parentheses two. The other reactant is nitric acid. Since it has an ic acid ending and there's no hydro in the front, we know it's based on a polyatomic ion that ends in ATE. Therefore, nitric acid must be based on nitrate. We know from memorizing that nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. Since nitric acid is an acid, it must also have hydrogen. We would need one H plus to balance out the minus one charge of the nitrate, so we get HNO3 as the formula for nitric acid. So far, we've identified our reactants. We can write the first part of the reaction as formulas of the reactants along with an arrow. On the other side of the arrow, we're predicting our products, and we have to make sure they're neutral in charge. The H and the OH are coming together to make water. Again, don't worry about the fact that there's two hydroxides in barium hydroxide. We'll balance that out later. We just need to predict what types of ions are coming together to make what type of product. We know water is always going to be one of the products of a neutralization reaction. The other product is going to be coming from the ions that are not the H and the OH. The ion in the acid that's not the H is the NO3. 
and the ion in the base that's not the OH is the BA. We know the BA and the NO3 will be coming together. Remember, always list the positive ion first. We have to know the charges on those ions so that we can use the crisscross rule to make a neutral ionic compound. Barium has a plus two charge because it's in group 2A. We know from memorizing that nitrate has a minus one charge. We crisscross and get Ba parentheses NO3 parentheses two as our neutral salt. Next, we're going to just fill those products into our right side of our reaction arrow. That gives us our unbalanced equation. We've predicted our neutral products but we haven't worried about how many of each thing that we have. Now that we've predicted our neutral products, we can balance the equation. This is the part where we worry about the fact that we have one nitrate on the left, but two nitrates on the right. The way we end up balancing this equation is by putting a two in front of the nitric acid and a two in front of the water. We end up with four hydrogens, two nitrates, one barium, and two oxygens that are not part of the nitrate on each side of the reaction. Typically, the number of waters is going to equal the number of hydroxides. I'm not going to say that's always going to be the case, but it's a pretty good guess. Again, it's generally helpful to keep polyatomic ions like nitrate stuck together in your counts. Just double check every piece of the reaction to make sure it's balanced. The very last thing we need to do is add in symbols for our states of matter. In general, all compounds except for water in an acid-base reaction are going to be aqueous solutions. Water is going to be a liquid. Our final balanced equation with our states of matter is 2 HNO3 aqueous plus Ba parentheses OH parentheses 2 aqueous makes 2 H2O liquid plus Ba parentheses NO3 parentheses 2 aqueous. We can write the net ionic equation for neutralization reaction, just like we've done with our precipitation reactions. A really easy rule of thumb is that if we have a strong acid reacting with a strong base, the net ionic equation for the neutralization reaction will always be H plus plus OH minus, makes water. That's because water is both a molecule and a liquid, so it's always going to be written as is in the complete ionic and net ionic equations. Since water is on the right-hand side, the things that make it up on the left-hand side are going to be stuck in the final equation as well. The H plus and the OH minus come together to make water in the final net ionic equation. The other ions from the molecular and complete ionic equations are spectator ions. They appear on both sides of the equation. If the reaction is with a strong acid and a strong base, that salt on the right-hand side will be aqueous. The ions in the salt match up with ions on the left side of the reaction equation and cancel out. Select the net ionic equation for the reaction between lithium hydroxide and hydrobromic acid. The molecular equation is LiOH aqueous plus HBr aqueous makes H2O liquid plus LiBr aqueous. By the way, you shouldn't actually have to be given that equation. You should be able to write it yourself based on the reactants given in word form. Is the correct answer A, H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous makes H2O liquid, B, Li plus aqueous, plus Br minus aqueous makes LiBr aqueous, C, LiOH aqueous makes Li plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous, or D, Li plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous plus H plus aqueous plus Br minus aqueous makes H2O liquid plus LiBr aqueous. The correct answer is A. H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous makes water liquid. When we break apart everything that is aqueous, 
we get a complete ionic equation that looks a lot like answer choice D, except the LIBR aqueous is broken into ions. Lithium ions and bromide ions appear on both sides, so we cross them off as spectator ions. We're left with the H plus and OH minus coming together to make water. You should be able to answer this quickly because lithium hydroxide is a strong base and hyperbromic acid is a strong acid.